What's up guys, my name is Brandon and after just releasing iOS 13.1.1 on Friday and 13.1.2 on Monday, Apple returns today on a Wednesday with the release of iOS 13.2 Developer Beta 1. Now this could also be out to public beta testers as early as tomorrow, but I will update the description down below when it is available for public beta testers. So the update here came in at a very large size on all devices. You can see here on my iPhone 11, it came in at 3.26 gigabytes it was also over three gigabytes on my 11 pro max and also on my 2018 ipad pro so a very large update even coming from 13.1.2 which is where i came from on all three devices and there aren't really any release notes for this beta so if you go ahead and check out the build number if we go to our settings general about you can see 13.2 there. The build number is 17B5059G. So a long build number there that ends in a G, which does indicate that we will see quite a few betas of 13.2 as expected. If we scroll down just a little bit more, you will see the modem firmware version also got a nice big jump here in 13.2. It went up to 1.02.04 on the iPhone 11s. It will be a little bit different depending on your model, but that could definitely help if you were having any kind of LTE issues, any kind of issues with your signal or anything like that. So now what's actually new here in iOS 13.2 beta one and the biggest change in this beta release is the implementation of one of the biggest features shown on stage by Apple at their 2019 iPhone 11 event and that is Deep Fusion. So Deep Fusion is the camera technology in the iPhone 11, iPhone 11 Pro and iPhone 11 Pro Max that will essentially just make our photos turn out a lot better in terms of sharpness, detail, exposure, everything. And this is going to be especially noticeable in medium light situation so when it's not dark out but it's also not too bright outside now this is different from smart hdr if we go into our settings over here inside of the camera you will see that we do have a smart hdr toggle down there however we do not have a toggle for deep fusion it all happens automatically your iphone the a13 bionic chip everything works in tandem to figure out when it actually needs to use deep fusion there's no toggle for it to turn on or off but deep fusion is different from smart hdr they're two separate technologies and of course smart hdr is what we saw in the 2018 iphones which definitely helped improve the camera quality and everything with those iphones so adding deep fusion on top of an improved smart hdr is going to take the iphone 11's camera quality up even another notch which is incredible because it's already so good so now what exactly is deep fusion and the verge explained this feature really well and just so you kind of get the full understanding here's how it's being described by them so by the time you press the shutter button on your iphone the camera has already grabbed four frames at a fast shutter speed to freeze motion in the shot and also four standard frames and then when you press the shutter button it takes one final longer exposure shot the three regular shots and the long exposure shot are then merged into what Apple calls a synthetic long. And basically all of those shots are going to be merged together to create magic. So really every time you take a picture on the iPhone 11, 11 Pro or 11 Pro Max, your iPhone is going to be taking nine photos and combining them into just one photo. And this all happens automatically in less than one second, which is just insane. It's really kind of game changing here. I know similar technology has been out there before on the Pixel and things like that, but of course it's Apple's way of doing it. They're late, but they're they're always going to do it the best. And like I said, there's no toggle inside of your settings. There's nothing new inside of the camera here that would even indicate that Deep Fusion is a feature. But when you press right there, you can see the image is available instantly and you wouldn't even know that Deep Fusion was doing all that work in the background. It's really incredible technology and I will definitely be testing it out on my iPhone 11 Pro Max here. I will be testing that out. I will be posting my results over on Twitter and also on Instagram on my story over there. So if you're not following me on those social media accounts, definitely go ahead and follow me. I'm definitely going to want to test this out and see if it's, you know, overhyped, if it's worth the hype. I really want to see what this is all about because this is really going to be a competitor for the Pixel 4, which is coming out very soon. I'm very curious to see because the Pixel has always outdone the iPhone in terms of picture quality, not video quality, picture quality. So I'm hoping that iPhone can actually beat the Pixel for once. But we will see. Of course, I will be making a video comparison between those two cameras later on this month as well. So stay tuned for that. Now, as for any other changes here in 13.2 Beta 1, there are a few of them. If we go into our settings here and scroll up until we get to privacy and we go down, you will see there's a new tab down there called research in all caps. If you go ahead and tap on that, 
you will see this right here. It says to participate in research app studies or to use apps that require sensor and usage data, you need to install the research app from the app store. And of course, since I don't have any apps collecting this data, it lets me know that no data is being collected. So that's pretty interesting. I'll have to research a little bit more about that, but that is a new tab here in the privacy section of our settings. And if we go into our general settings right here, you can see we have a newly titled section right here called AirPlay and Handoff now instead of just Handoff. And if we tap on that, we have a new feature here called transfer to HomePod. It says when playing media, bring iPhone close to the top of the HomePod to transfer what's playing. So I'm looking forward to testing that out and seeing how well that works, but that is a pretty cool feature if you do have a HomePod. You also have a feature up here. It says automatically airplay to TVs. You can have it set to automatic, never, or ask. That's also a cool feature if you have multiple TVs or multiple Apple TVs. Now, another feature included here in iOS 13 is something I'm extremely excited to announce is back and it has to do with the AirPods, and that is announce messages with Siri. It's finally back in iOS 13.2. If we go to our settings, go to Siri and search, you can see we have a new section there called announce messages. If we tap on that, we could turn on announce messages with Siri and you can read there. It says have Siri read out messages without having to unlock your iPhone when second generation AirPods and some Beats headphones are connected. And this is an extremely useful feature. I use this a lot in the very first beta of iOS 13 before it got removed, especially when I was like on bike rides and things like that. It was extremely useful. This is one of my favorite features in general in iOS 13. So I'm very excited that it's back here in iOS 13.2. I just hope that they don't remove it again, but you can see here you can have have it say announce messages from messages and you can see here it says favorites recent contacts or everyone and i'm assuming when you have other applications there as well that you can announce messages from they will show up right there as well like maybe whatsapp or i don't know what else could be integrated here but you can see there those are the options now in 13.2 now while i was doing this i also noticed another new change here in ios 13.2 and that has to do with the volume hud so you will see that there's actually a new animation now when the volume hud disappears so let me just go ahead and do that again watch when the volume hud disappears you can see there if you watch it slowly you will notice that there is a new animation when it goes off the screen and it seems to go off a little bit faster as well just for comparison we have ios 13.1 here on the left ios 13.2 on the right we press the volume one time you can see it goes away faster and it doesn't have the same animation there i'll show you one last time there you go. That is the difference in iOS 13.2's volume HUD. We also have a new feature here in iPad OS 13.2. You can see now the home screen and dock setting is actually on the main panel now instead of in your display settings. And this of course is where you can change like the icon size, the today view settings and all that. It now has its own standalone menu, which is nice. But that's the only difference I found so far on iPad OS 13.2, but there could be others. I will definitely touch on those in my follow-up video later on this week. Now, unfortunately, there are not any new emojis yet in iOS 13.2, at least not in the first beta. We may get new emojis in the second beta or maybe just the final release of iOS 13.2. We do know that new emojis are for sure coming and they do usually come in the point two release. So hopefully we do see those by the time the final version of 13.2 gets released, which should be late October, possibly early November. Now, as far as performance goes, of course, it is a little bit too soon to talk about the performance here in iOS 13.2 but it seems smooth for now. I opened up some games like the new Call of Duty Mobile and everything seems to be running fine. I mean, animations are fine. I haven't had any crashes in settings or no freeze ups or lags on setting or anything like that. So it seems to be good. I can't imagine it's a huge jump from 13.1.2 if there is any kind of increase in performance. I can't imagine it's major. I mean, this was a big sized release, but I can't imagine the performance is going to be impacted too much. And the main reason for that is because iOS 13.1.2 was just so good, just so smooth in general that I can't really imagine too big of an improvement in performance. And the same goes with battery life. I can't imagine a huge jump in battery life here in 13.2. iOS 13.1.1 helped a lot of people with battery drain issues that introduced a battery drain fix and gave a lot of people better battery life. And some people noticed a big jump from 13.1.1 to 13.1.2 as well. Some people actually got battery drain after 13.1.2. So it's going to be different for everybody, but I can't imagine 13.2 is going to help battery life any. So if you're looking to update to 13.2 just to improve your battery life, I would think twice. I definitely wouldn't install it because I don't think it's going to improve your battery at all. Now, maybe in a later beta it will, but the first beta usually never improves battery life. So should you guys update to iOS 13.2? And I say that if you have an iPhone 11, 11 Pro or 11 Pro Max, 
I definitely would upgrade just because Deep Fusion is going to make for much higher quality photos on your brand new iPhone. However, just be aware that any kind of new beta release could introduce new bugs. It probably will introduce new bugs. So if you want to have like a stable device, especially if it's your daily driver, which I assume if you have an iPhone 11, it is, I would possibly hold off until at least beta two. And that's just to save yourself from headaches with bugs and things like that. I'm sure the mail application will have some bugs and I'm sure I'll find some others throughout the week as well. Now, if you don't have an iPhone 11, 11 Pro or 11 Pro Max, I probably would not update to iOS 13.2, at least not the very first beta, because again, you don't get the deep fusion feature because you don't have one of the new iPhones and there's really not much else that's changed and you really only have the downside of new bugs. You don't get a lot of new features, but you do get the possibility of new bugs being introduced that'll just make your life a little bit more difficult. However, if you do love the announce messages with Siri feature like I do, that could be a reason to update. That's just really up to you. But again, I would probably wait until at least the second beta or at least wait until my follow-up video later on this week so I can let you guys know how it's been running and that can make up your mind if you should update or not. So anyways, guys, there you have it. That is my take on iOS 13.2 developer beta one. I'm sure there are some other features and changes out there that I missed but I will be touching on those later on this week in my follow-up video. If you guys enjoyed this video and all my recent iOS update videos, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up and of course subscribe so you don't miss any of my future iOS 13 beta coverage. So anyways guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.